Hello friend, my name is Bunny, Bunny Rabbit and, today, I would like to discuss the topic of, planning a problem solving meeting, with you. Successful meetings are just like interviews, presentations, letters, and memos, they must be planned. When to hold a meeting? Given the costs of bringing people together, the most fundamental question is whether to hold a meeting at all. Some experts report that, roughly, half of all business meetings are unproductive. There are many times when a meeting probably isn't justified, including when the matter could be handled just as well, over the phone. You could send a memo, an email, or a fax to achieve the same goal. Key people are not available to attend. The subject would be considered trivial by many of the participants. There isn't enough time to handle the business at hand. Members aren't prepared. The meeting is routine, and there is no compelling reason to meet. The job can be handled just as well by one or more people, without the need to consult others. Your mind is made up, or you've already made the decision. A good rule of thumb is that a planner should call a meeting only when the following questions can be answered. Yes. Is a job beyond the capacity of one person? A job might naturally be too much for one single person, or bunny in my case, to handle for two reasons. One, it might call for more information than the person processes, or two, it might take more time than one person has available. Are individuals' tasks interdependent? Each member at a committee meeting should have a different and separate role. If each member's share of the task can be completed without the input from other members, it's better to have the members co-acting under the supervision of the manager. Is there more than one decision or solution? Questions that have only one right answer aren't well suited to discussion in meetings. Whether the sales force made its quota last year, and whether the budget will accommodate paying overtime to meet a schedule. For instance, are questions answered by checking the figures, not by getting the regional sales managers, for instance, to reach an agreement? Are misunderstandings or reservations likely? It's easy to see how meetings can be useful when the goal is to generate ideas or solve problems, such as a food shortage in the rabbit warren. But meetings are often necessary when confusing or controversial information is being communicated. Suppose, for instance, that changing federal rules and company policy require employees to document their use of company cars in far more detail than was ever required before. It's easy to imagine how this sort of change would be met with grumbling and resistance. In this sort of situation, simply issuing a memo outlining the new rules might not gain the kind of compliance that is necessary. Only by talking out their complaints and hearing why the new policy is being instituted will employees see a need to go along with the new procedure.